beauty teller data at Toyota Motor Europe, and with whom I've had the great pleasure to work with for the past 12 months. He has more than 10 years of experience, which he uses in his current Brussels role in application development and rollout for the headquarters IT department. And now over to you, Philip. Yeah, thanks a lot, Will. So let me quickly check that my controls are working. Yes. So yeah, good day, everybody. So my name is Philip. Uh, like Will said, I work in Toyota Motor Europe or, or TME's Information Systems Division, and I'm responsible for the area of customer and lead management. Um, I've been working for Tamer or with Tamer for about four years now, and today I will happily share some of the details of our collaboration with everyone. So maybe first to set the scene, I want to share some history of Toyota's operations in Europe. Uh, so Toyota Motor Europe, or shortened TME, as a headquarters, uh, was established in the early 90s. Uh, and initially its focus was more to optimize logistical operations in Europe for vehicles and for service parts uh, and to centralize certain operations like uh, sales and production planning, um, introduce some localized R&D. Um, but using TME's position to also optimize end customer experience was something that was introduced actually only a few years ago. So before TME was established, there were already what we call NMSCs, so it's national marketing and sales companies, who are responsible for distributing Toyota and Lexus vehicles to local retailers. And those local retailers have then traditionally been the main contact points uh, for customers uh, who are vehicle owners or vehicle drivers, um, where they're offering sales and after sales services. Now, we have 30 of those NMSCs, covering a total of about 50 markets right now. And this is ranging from, from Canary Islands to Iceland to Russia to Kazakhstan, so it's quite a, a large geographical area. Um, and a couple of years ago, we started counting the number of customer data sources in this territory, and we gave up after hitting the 250 mark. Um, so generally speaking, our customer data is very spread out, um, both geographically, but also in terms of systems used and, and the formats in which the data is stored. So customers can come into contact with Toyota at different touch points. So they, they can go to the retailer, um, they can get a financing or an insurance contract, they can raise a complaint directly with the NMSC, um, or they can create an online customer profile in our customer portal. Now, the problem is that there is a very limited integration of, um, of data. Uh, and there's no data sharing between these different entities. So this makes it very hard for us to, to align on, for instance, things like, do we have the consent of the customer <clears throat> to actually communicate with him or her? So to our end customers, Toyota is actually just one brand. So they expect a consistent experience. Customers don't care that there are multiple legal entities behind that one brand. And our ultimate goal is to achieve this golden customer record, this single ID for every single customer in Europe. And you will hear me repeat that goal multiple times throughout this presentation. But given this starting condition, there was no easy way to, uh, to achieve that goal. So why does TME need a golden record? Well, first of all, we need to fix the current issues that we have. We want to share data across these Toyota entities in Europe to help us increase revenue, but also to reduce customer frustrations. We want to increase the success rate of marketing activities. We want to improve the customer experience across the entire customer journey, starting from awareness to sales, to after sales, to trading. Um, both is online and offline experience. And we also have to eliminate costs linked to having bad or missing data. Now, more importantly, TME sees the golden record as a foundational item to unlock our future. The automotive market is going through a transformation phase, not only in Europe, but worldwide. And, and car ownership is on the decline. So we have to enable Toyota's mobility and car sharing solutions that are being developed right now. Secondly, we are working on what we call an omni-channel architecture to be the baseline for any customer interaction in Europe, in which having one shared customer data set is really key. Finally, we have to ensure that business continuity is guaranteed in this changing, disrupted market. So as an overall vision, we need to shift from the current inconsistent, confusing customer experience to one that is both memorable and a best fit to the customer's expectations. Now, 
part of the challenge is, well, we kicked off this project with a clear intention. We don't start from scratch. We start from a situation where we've been um, collecting customer information for decades. So there is a lot of data out there. It's just very unstructured. We've got old data mixed with new. We've got bad data mixed with good. But overall, we should have the pieces to the puzzle already available to us. So for instance, from the initial purchase, we're likely to get the right customer's address, his phone information, and we can identify who the actual owner is of a vehicle. From an online customer profile, we can probably retrieve an active email address that we could use for any kind of digital communication. And service events can be used to re-verify that ownership is still the same as before and reconfirm some contact details. So all of these pieces are there and we need to leverage that existing data. Tamer helps us complete that picture. Not only that, but by matching records from sales, after sales, financing, and direct customer facing systems, we can start building what we call our 360 degree view of the customer. And this will allow us to deduce um, past, present, and future value in this customer's relationship with Toyota. Vehicle history tells us about the frequency and average spend of dealer visits. Marketing consent allows us to proactively reach out to the customer with promotions or service reminders. And past and present cases tell us about customer complaints, dissatisfaction, uh, we have things like that promoter scores and so on. So this 360 view was absolutely unreachable before considering something like Tamer. So what does Tamer look like in the solution that we've built here at uh, TME? Well, we had to make sure that we ticked all of the boxes. We had to make sure that there was a tight integration with the Tamer from local systems and that it was easy support for product upgrades. Uh, we had to support like full initial data loads uh, which, when we're dealing about millions of records, but also batch updates or online updates of customer records. We had to standardize the data model that would work across all NMSCs and that would allow us to build that golden record. And we had to integrate Tamer's output or uh, whatever published clusters or, or records we had with other TME systems. So the middle box of what you see here in this overview is a very high level representation uh, of, of something that my team developed is what, what we call the consumer domain. So basically it's a central repository of customer records and clusters. Our consumer domain is tightly integrated with Tamer. We exchange source records and clusters through um, S3 buckets, and we ensure that all files are fully secured by using encryption with uh, AWS KMS. This data exchange is already established before the model training phase. And speaking of training, there's a unique project that we have to implement for every NMSC, or sometimes even for every single market, to make sure that we maximize the accuracy of Tamer's output. The goal that we want to achieve is really this golden record. So high precision is absolutely key. And we have to avoid false positives at any cost. With the help of our Tamer consultants like Will, we also enrich the data where it's needed by using things like data catalogs, or we do things like black, blacklisting dummy values or doing some data transformation to maximize the output of uh, Tamer. Once trained, the instance will create clusters and cluster deltas that we consume on a daily basis, and those get um, fed back to the consumer domain so we can expose these to, um, to other systems. Systems producing source records, like the ones you see on the left-hand side of this slide, and we have um, systems consuming clusters, uh, which can be the same systems that actually produce source records. They can integrate with the consumer domain using our secure REST API currently. We're also looking to complement this with uh, file-based data ingestion to optimize performance for large data sets, since some of our NMSCs have really multiple millions of uh, customer records. Consuming systems, they will get both the cluster information, which is very useful for them to identify the number of duplicates they might have within their uh, data sets. And they will also get a merged view of the cluster, um, which can be used to enrich local data, to enable analytics, or to be used directly for marketing campaigns. So consumer domain, domain can be seen as the vehicle, but Tamer really is the engine that drives our customer data unification for Toyota Motor Europe. 
So if we look at some of the achievements so far, um, early on, so back in 2016, um, we went through a phase where I, I think almost every of these NMSCs needed convincing of uh, Tamer's power. So I remember the first use case we did was for Toyota Spain, where we basically built a data warehouse for customer analytics to enable um, Toyota Spain to have a local 360 view. Clusters were the core components of that data warehouse, where they would attach vehicle data, service history data, etc., from other local systems to build this 360 view. The second case was for Toyota France. Um, they also went through a, a Salesforce implementation in 2016 as a, the platform for sales and after sales. With the help of Tamer, they significantly reduced the efforts and costs of uh, data migration from the legacy systems. I was closely involved in that project as well, and I can testify that without Tamer, there would have been weeks, if not months, of delay and a lot of data cleanup through afterwards. The third use case was for Toyota Great Britain, who developed their own customer user interface based on the cluster information to assist their call center team in interactions with the end customer. So showing to the end customer what data was collected for them and then filling the gaps with the help of Tamer. Tamer has also been a great help for GDPR compliance. We've built a system what we call Consent Center, which is based on Tamer's clusters. So whenever we collect a customer's marketing consent, let's say in system A, and Tamer clusters that customer with another record in system B, the consent center will propagate that new consent to system B by using the cluster to make sure that we have a shared consent across the Toyota network. And this is always done in real time. Secondly, Tamer just makes data subject access requests so much easier because we can immediately identify where the customer's data exists. Finally, Tamer is supporting a TME initiative to start real customer master data management. And in the first phase, we will use it to bootstrap uh, consumer data to our pan-European CRM system and make sure that any duplicates are managed in there. Okay, thank you, Philip. So, sorry, I'm still trying to go to the next slide, but uh, <laughs> there's one more slide that I want to... Uh, but I, I seem to have lost control. Ah, there we go. Um, so I wanted to talk about what, what does the future bring for our collaboration because it doesn't end where we are today. So first of all, we still have some rollout work to do. We've covered our largest markets so far. So I think we've covered about 60 to 70% of our customer data volume in Europe, but we have some more NMSEs to complete by 2021. In parallel, we will expand our master data management efforts. So we will create an organization and processes for data and cluster curation and a central repository for data quality rules. On top, there is a huge case, a, a use case, huge use case, I think, to introduce Tamer's low latency matching capabilities as well, for instance, in our retailer systems. So we can avoid duplication and data entry. And then lastly, we want to uh, actively explore other areas of TME for use cases which are unrelated to customer data. So we've had talks in the past about um, company data unification. Uh, we've explored a classification use case with our finance and purchasing department. Um, so it's safe to say that our relationship with Tamer will strengthen even more over time. That's all for me today. I'll be very happy to take your questions or, or elaborate a bit more on TME's use case if there's any need to. So I think from here on, I'll hand over to Chris from Amazon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, before we get to Chris, a quick introduction.